This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Today's show is being brought to you by Crawford's Barbecue Pit Products. Head on over to CrawfordsBBQ.com. Check out their complete line of awesome barbecue products. Today's show is from February 2nd, 2010. Executive producer of the Barbecue Pitmasters, John Marcus, is in. While I have personally never seen an episode of Barbecue Pitmasters, I'm pretty confident in saying that John Marcus created the watershed moment that drove barbecue popularity over the top in that time frame. Let's get right to it. You be the judge. Here's John Marcus with Greg from February 2nd, 2010. We will go ahead and pick up our conversation with John Marcus, executive producer of TLC's Barbecue Pitmasters, which you can see every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Depending on where you are in the country, it might be a little bit of different airing time. So, John, we are talking about the cast here and how they're kind of reaping the rewards of being on the show, which is certainly uh, something that I'm well, I'm sure they probably anticipated they'd get some type of reward in that regard, but maybe some didn't anticipate the amount that they were getting. So in regards to, to casting the show, we had went over this the first time I had you on, and it was kind of like a breakneck speed type of thing. So if you had, or let's assume you get the green light to have a second season how do you go about casting the second go around what changes would you make are there changes to be made what do you think about that uh you know the first time we only had five days to cast the show so i just went to my go-to people these are all people that i've known either from my past work in televising barbecue events or just people that i cook next to uh, i had some personal contact with all this cast i'd like to change for season two i'd like to now open it up and have five weeks of like a casting call. You know, like when, when they announce they're going to make the next Superman installment and you see people lined up around the block in New York City. I mean, I'd like to do that in about 20 towns and cities around the country. And I'd like to get uh, videos sent in from people who really want to be on the show. I want to I wanna like, like have every kind of barbecue person represented on the show. And now we're not going to be able to have a large cast, but I'd really like to... Uh, know that I have turned over every rock out there to see what we got. And would you be uh, taking email requests, too? Wasn't there like a general email address that people could send uh, interest or inquiries to? Yeah, right now there's an email address that's set up. It's called uh, bbqpitmasters at originalmedia.com. Uh, if people want, they can send to that. Or, or they can, they're going to be able to see announcements that are going to come. I'm going to probably have you do one. They're going to be in our trade papers. We'll put something up on the form just to let people know how they can get a hold of us. Okay, so when we look into casting, and I've had uh, some sources around me say that maybe some of the people, there were a, a few rumblings in the TLC community that they might not have been necessarily uh, overly enthusiastic with the fact that the people that are on the show now weren't necessarily... And I think to, to one point... they. Whether it's true or not, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they're not, you know, winning the grand championships. But I guess my point is you're definitely not afraid of showing that this is a whole different thing. Just because these guys are called the barbecue pitmasters doesn't mean that they're the only four or seven they're going to be battling out week to week. Uh, well, you know, the truth is it's a TV show. And when I approach the show, I have to approach it like I would a regular television show, like a half hour comedy or a drama, which is I'm putting these pieces together. I mean, there has to be active choice choices made. I'd love to have all the best cooks coming forward to be on the show, but we just don't have room for that in each installment. But if we have enough seasons, we'll get around to a lot of them. I just really need people who have all the skills put together in a package. They know what they're doing, uh, or they have great attitude about what they're doing, and they've, they've won a few things here and there. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a compromise here and there, but, uh, you know, any commercial venture is going to be that. Is there any truth that some of the guys uh, wouldn't be necessarily asked to come back if there was a second season like Harry or, or Paul? 
Um, any truth when you say that? You mean like people are saying that or like, you know, I, I will say this, uh, that everybody who is on the show knows what I know. And, and I've talked to all our cast members and said, I don't know. <laughs> and it's, I love being in the position of not knowing because I have no pressure right now. It's much easier to say I don't know and know that you don't know when you don't know. The truth is I don't know. <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean everyone's had their moment on the show and, and there are people that – I mean I loved working with all of them. And I know that's really show business to say that. But I got to tell you, these, I just got a huge kick out of these folks week to week. All of them gave us great television, you know. And uh, some people – I would say, uh, you know, I, 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 I want them to get as famous as possible doing the show. I love it that one of our cast members has been paid big dollars to be flown to Chicago and cook a Super Bowl party. That's uh, very nice. I'd like a gig like that myself, but still, still waiting for that invitation. For well, you. listen, I'll tell you, you know, I mean, uh, ultimately, what did Andy Warhol say? Everyone's going to have their 15 minutes. Yeah, well, I'll keep waiting for that. So uh, <laughs> if, if, if the next season comes, or, or let's just be positive, when the, when the next season comes, do you plan to take some of, the, some of the crew that's here for season one over to a season two, or do you completely recast, or what's the thought process behind that? Well, I mean, I... You know, I'd love to take everybody. There's my show business answer. <laughs> There's my Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood executive producer answer. I just love them all to come over for the next one. Um, but I have to wait and see what the network says. You know, I have to hear from them. I mean, you know, certainly, uh, like I said, everyone's had their great moments on the show. And uh, I, I, I think, Greg, what you're trying to do is trick me into some announcement here. Well, let me let me let me uh, rephrase my question because I have kind of a whole philosophy on reality TV. Uh, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it in in a large portion because I think it's kind of. Uh, eliminated a lot of great creativity that's gone around in writing rooms for a number of years as you could probably well attest to uh, uh, i've had there's been several nails put into my coffin <laughs> exactly so by reality and by the way you know there are two kinds of ho- ho- just want to say that two kinds of reality there's a reality that is scripted reality right where you really see writers and executive producers manipulating the events and then there's uh what we call our show, which is a we actually let things happen and we turn that into a show. But but go ahead. So I guess my my point to make was if you have the the shows in reality TV that seem to work and uh, you know kind of scrubbing off the little sub uh, sub lesson you just gave us there in reality television. The shows that seem to work in reality TV are, are ones that kind of have a recurring cast. For instance, uh, John and Kate plus eight, same people, different day, life happens, shit happens, blah 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 blah. Uh, and, and you have that kind. So the people have, or the audience is growing to know these people and what they're all about and going through their trials and tribulations of life. The second uh, version of a reality TV show that seems to work is the cast changes, uh, for instance, Survivor. But there's a contest. There's something to win in it. There's big money there to win, aside from all the uh, celebrity fame or however quick and uh, dynamic that fades. There's something at the end which people can bank on and they know they're leading up to that. And right now where I see kind of a gray area with the TLC Pitmasters is it's if it's not carrying over the cast, then viewers are going to have to get to know new people, which may be a detractor. Or uh, And then on the other side of that, it, they're not winning $500,000 at the end either. So I guess I just was kind of wondering where the show was going to be focused at. Well, let's take uh, one point at a time here. I mean, if there's going to be new people on the show next year, let's put it this way. They better be better at being on TV than the people I got already. Right. Otherwise, they ain't going to be on. They have to be better. Um, the one, one critique I got from the network, and I agree with them on this, is that they feel that our audience – and our audience is largely non-barbecue aficionados. Let's face it. I sure. mean, that's who's that. That there's a letdown for the audience when they see that our cast members don't win the contest. <laughs> and I've had executives say to me, "Wait a minute, our people aren't winning." Right. And I said, "Welcome to competition barbecue." Does you that know? does that work against you though? Well, it works against us that the, our, that our people aren't winning. It does. So here's what I'll kind of my wishes. 
and this is going to be in concert with my network with TLC, my wish is that we make a revision to the show, that we create our own circuit that is actually part of regulation competition so that there's going to be a tour essentially that is going to piggyback onto existing venues. And con- And by the way, it might not even be a barbecue contest. What if the pitmasters were set up out in front of the Alamo cooking? Right. And so we create a circuit that is event oriented that allows at the end of the cycle someone to walk away with a huge purse. That's something I'd love to see on the show. Absolutely. Let me uh, grab a quick question here from uh, John Dawson in Boise, Idaho. Had a quick question. Is there anything that you regret about the show? In other words, would you anything that you would like to change next year? Well, I guess we, we kind of uh, well, I can surmise that. Add to that. I, I'd, re- I'd really like to get a small raise. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't like a small? I'd like a big raise. <laughs> you know, I mean, the truth is... Uh, it's the least I've ever made in television and the most fun. Uh, sometimes that seems to go hand in hand, doesn't it, John? Sure does. I had so much fun doing this, and I got to be kind of part of directing it and part of you know editing it and part of everything. But it was really kind of an all-inclusive experience. You know, Normally, I have to hand stuff off on another show, but uh, mm-hmm. we had like a really good crew. We had a showrunner uh, who worked with me, a guy named Brian Catalina, who did the first season of Deadliest Catch. It was like a really – I got an education, so it was really an eye-opener for for me so you, you guys seem to be not i don't want to say you're you're favoring the kcbs but i mean there's a lot of exposure going on for the kcbs and uh is there any was there any type of backdoor deal greasy palm with stuffed envelopes and bags and bags of cash that uh the kcbs gave you in order to make sure that you were showing them the most out of all the other sanctioning bodies to put in your request for a future show, please contact John Solberg via email at john, J-O-N, at the bbqcentralshow.com. Hey, before we get into the second segment, let me take a minute to tell you about Crawford's Barbecue Pit Spritz. Pit Spritz is all natural and gluten-free. Pit Spritz keeps your meat super moist during the cooking process. The peach pit spritz adds an amazing sweet peach taste to your barbecue. It's great on all meats, and it does exceptionally well on pork. All you need to do is screw the included trigger sprayer onto the 16-ounce bottle, and you're ready to go. Get all the details on Crawford's pit spritz. Head on over to CrawfordsBBQ.com. Be sure you use the coupon code GREG at checkout. You will save 10% off your entire order. That's GREG, G-R-E-G. So you, you guys seem to be not, I don't want to say you're, you're favoring the KCBS, but I mean, there's a lot of exposure going on for the KCBS. And uh, is there any, was there any type of backdoor deal, greasy palm with stuffed envelopes and bags and bags of cash that uh, the KCBS gave you in order to make sure that you were showing them the most out of all the other sanctioning bodies? I think the people who would be the most surprised by that would be the people at the KCBS wondering where the hell did that money come from. <laughs> I don't think that they have that. But and I mean, because, you, but 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 let me say this. I mean, I feel a tremendous loyalty and debt to Carolyn Wells, who has been a partner from the beginning in my barbecue to television. So you bet I'm going to show that logo. I'm, I'm going to let people extol the virtues of being part of this world. Because, I mean, I owe that. I owe that to the KCBS. All right, so kind of sank or, uh, transitioning nicely into this next question. And I'm sure you've probably, well, the show has single-handedly increased their membership uh, quite a bit this past uh, three or four months, undoubtedly. Uh, but talking about the KCBS, obviously they just had new elections uh, a couple weeks ago. They had a new uh, person elected to the board of directors, Candy Weaver. There's been a lot of talk this year in the KCBS or within the KCBS, especially on uh, forums and so forth, about infighting and the old school continuing to run it the way it was. And there needs to be change and needs to be changed now. You've been a member of the KCBS for a long time. You actually made a run at the BOD in the past. What do you like about KCBS and but perhaps more importantly, what do you think needs to be tweaked in order for it to continue to grow and prosper? Well, what I, what I like about your question, Greg, is you set a question up that you could get me into just a heap and load of trouble. <laughs> but I'm going to answer it anyway. You know, they pay um, me very minimal I, dollars to ask the tough questions. 
<laughs> Here's what I love about the KCBS. I love that about 30 years ago, about four or five people were in somebody's backyard and say, you know what we ought to do? We ought to have contests with barbecue. I think that that spirit – that founding spirit is exactly what needs to be retained and nurtured in the KCBS. I, I, I really think that, that uh, it, the, the heart and soul of competition lies in what was put together to begin with. Now, the problems they're having are basically problems of growing pains. This thing is like at 35% growth a year. I mean, if it were a commodity, I would buy it. It's right. that kind of like future, you know? And And I just really think that um, there, uh, there needs to be um, a bit more of a vision put forth about you know being ha- hands on about contests, about making sure the organizers have the proper amount of judges and the proper qualified amount of judges. I mean, there are too many contests where teenagers are pulled into the tent at the last minute to judge and. Man, when you're up all night cooking brisket, you don't want to think that's who's looking at it and tasting it, you know? So that's my one gripe about the organization, but I think they know that within the ranks, and they want to do better. Oh, I just had a great question, and I've, uh, I've lost it, unfortunately. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, we have a uh, question from David out in Kansas. How about making a contest for your complete season for every place – they get on tape, they get a certain amount of points, and at the end of the season, you have a, play- a payoff within your own show. Of course, that would require sponsorship dollars, I would imagine. Well, I mean, that's akin to what I was talking about earlier, which is right. you know creating a circuit that, uh, that did. And I think that's a really good thought, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see that actually uh, put into motion for next season. So here's a quick question I have. Uh, we've got about a minute left uh, before I let you go. We you sh- you made the the show of well you didn't make it but you know the show sh- uh, the Dover contest where Tuffy gives Myron a brisket and uh, it, that was quite a, a big hinge to the show and then all of a sudden kind of at the end just kind of in passing it's glossed over that Myron just happened to win the brisket category I mean why wasn't that showing on television that was like the big storyline of the show. Well, when something really key like that doesn't get shown, it could be possibly that one of our camera people was out taking a pee break. Oh, no. So, but, you know, we did embrace it, and, and, and there he was with that big trophy. You finally, you didn't see him go up and get it, but you, you saw him like, you know, sometimes um, with an audience, there's, you don't have to show them everything. You know, in a, in other words, when they go, oh my gosh, and there he is with his trophy, they connect the dots because the audience is always smarter than you think they are. And and we did go up to him and say, you know, are, are you going to give him some of the prize money? And he said, hell no. Yeah, big surprise there, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I was surprised by that. Yeah, I even said to Myron, are you kidding? And he goes, hey, I, I, I'd have the, I'd have the same thing done to me. Now let's uh, let's be honest here. I think you know, and, and I had Myron on the show last week. Uh, I've had him on the show uh, three times now. I've talked to him off the off the air a handful of times regarding life and barbecue in general. This guy that we're seeing on the television, this isn't Myron Mixon everyday life. This is Myron Mixon, the uh, the reality TV star, and he is as much uh, cop to it last week. You know, saying that he's playing up certain things, or he was playing up certain things as it was being taped. But I mean, he really seems to be kind of the breakout personality. You love him or you hate him, and he's really kind of reaping those rewards with the Jay Leno appearance, and then of course Craig Ferguson last week, which is uh, was an outstanding. Appearance. So, I mean, what's the what's the backdoor uh, kind of inside secret to all that stuff? Well, let me put it this way. You know, I I think Myron is a very special guy. I think he's a very is a huge talent as as a cook. He is a barbecue legacy. He understands the ins and outs of how to cook meat and flavor it. He's really um, an exceptional man. Um, but he's not Sir Lawrence Olivier. He would not. He would not be able to create that persona if it weren't part of who he is. And what I and I would like to propose that what you see in Myron is a facet of his personality. I agree with that. If you if you poke a stick in a cage, you're going to piss off that animal. <laughs> and if you think about Myron alone in a in a dark room with a couple of people and lights and a camera. And those people off camera are saying to him, well, you know what Tuffy's saying, he's going to whip your ass. And Leanne's saying she'd love nothing more than to take you down. You're going to get the guy going. And that's what we would do every week is we would just poke a stick in the cage. We didn't write those lines. That's, that's a fast and a modern. And what he did, did with it basically did not come created out of whole cloth. He just was channeling part of Myron Mixon. And 
riding that uh, channeling efforts to some great uh, TV success. I mean, was it like the most awkward, wonderful, and horrific thing ever to see a Scottishman and a guy from Unadella, Georgia, talking to each other with those accents? It was almost uh, not only illegible, but intolerable. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Uh, if, God willing, Myron does another Craig Ferguson appearance, I'm going to insist on subtitles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And there you have it from February the 2nd, 2010, Mr. John Marcus, executive producer of Barbecue Pitmasters, along with several other amazing barbecue shows. I can say, I hate to admit, I have never actually watched an episode of Barbecue Pitmasters, but I do know for a fact, the one for John Marcus, probably none of us would be talking here today. Hey, don't forget, head over to CrawfordsBBQ.com, check out their awesome line of barbecue pit products. Be sure you use the coupon code GREG at checkout for 10% off your entire order. As always, I truly appreciate you listening. Until next time, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.